Hey comic book friends, this is Travis and this is another edition of my vlog, What the Fugue. Um, got a list of things I think I want to talk about. We'll see if I get to all of them or if I forget to read my list and not talk about them. Um, let's see, first up I want to talk about the um, one of the kind of interesting things I heard kind of roundaboutly around through the um, San Diego Comic Con thing. Um, was that DC Comics is um, is going to work on getting themselves three work done three months in advance again before the 52 relaunch happened? They every single title had three books in the can before the title was released. Well, they obviously over time um, they've gotten behind or were they're hurrying to get books done at the time and. Um, you know, lately if you've been reading the DC books, you can kind of look and see lots of times you'll have multiple artists on a book, like multiple pencilers to finish a book up. Or if it's got one penciler on it, it may have like two or three or five inkers on it. And then you've got, you know, three or four colorists on it and stuff. And the reason that's happened is, is that the initial art has gotten behind. And so then there's no way for the inker who, to get his work done or the colors to get their work on done on time for them to continue to um, ship on time. That's something the that DC has dedicated themselves to doing is shipping on time. I think there's been one book and just it's just recently um, Swamp Thing got delayed a week. Um, that's the only um, book I think that has been delayed and there was a shipping issue with it. It wasn't actually a they had the product done but something with the printer shipper part of it um, fail. But anyway, so here soon, more than we've already seen, we're going to see fill-in artists on stuff until the actual official art teams can get themselves caught back up and get that three months in there. And the reason for that is, or, or the, the good thing about that is, the reason they should do that, um, as opposed to giving us little bits and pieces of art from our artists that we expect to be on the books is, is really who ends up getting hurt Besides us, the consumer who maybe isn't seeing what feels like consistent art because it keeps changing as the different artists are doing different parts of the book, is that inker and that colorist, they're not making as much money. If the artist, if the penciler gets behind and, and only gives the inker, let's say, four days to ink an entire book, obviously there's no way he's going to be able to do that. And so he only gets to ink, let's say, four pages. So he's only getting paid for that four pages of work as opposed to 22 pages of work. The same for the colorist. The colorist is only, gets paid by the page, and if he can only if he if he doesn't have time to color all 22 pages, they're only getting paid for a smaller wage. And so, really, to be fair, in my opinion, I think this is a good thing because then it gives an opportunity for um, you know for those other creators to get their full wages, to make a wage, to get paid. I mean, we want to have those good people doing those, you know, works and whatnot. And I think more and more um, um, uh, colorists and inkers are important to the book. You know, it's not just about the pencilists. That other, those other crafts really add to the book or take away from the book if they're not done well. So, you know, I think it's good. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. Um, it just may mean that in the interim we may have a little more chaos as far as who's doing what books and kind of a mad shuffle and whatnot. Um, we, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, last week I talked about, you know, one of the exciting things I thought about um, the San Diego Comic Con was the Sandman um, um, announcement that sometime in 2013 we're going to get um, a new Sandman miniseries. So excited about that that I decided um, I want to read all of them again. Um, and Ethan, he hasn't read any of them yet, and I think he's old enough now. Fine, let's read those books and see. You know, let him read those books. There's not anything too drastic in those. Um, so this will be his first Vertigo titles that he'll be getting to read and stuff. And so I decided that I don't want to read my singles because I don't want to keep taking them out of the bags and you know, precious comics. So I went and ordered all ten of the newest editions of the trade. They're totally recolorized. I got them two or three days ago. 
Here they are. Well, here's all. Here's nine of them because the tenth one doesn't come out until November. Um, but here they are. They're pretty awesome looking. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, me and Ethan talked about it a little bit. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll talk about each of these books. Not reviews. I, I'm hesitant to call anything me and Ethan do as actual reviews anymore. We just talk about the books and what we want to talk about. So. Me as an old reader rereading them, and Ethan as a new reader reading them for the first time, we'll be going back and probably reading these books, and maybe once a month we'll read one book a month or something like that, and um, and and talk about the book. Um, the the book, this latest printing, is just from flipping through it. It's gorgeous. They recolored it, like I said. Um, colors are closer to the hues that they actually really wanted to have. The paper is a higher, higher quality paper, so it just really feels really nice. Um, my wife owns a copy of the first edition, the first trade of this, and um, whereas that's cool, the quality of this one is so much nicer um, than, um, than her copy, uh, I think. Like I said, the coloring of it, uh, the feel of the pages, and stuff like that. So. That's, that'll be fun. That's something that we're going to be doing here in the future. Um, got my notes. Um, so um, I guess look forward to that, or we'll see how that goes. I, I think that might be that might be fun to do. Um, other things that I have coming up that I've I, I've been mean to get to, and I, I just haven't had time amongst my regular schedule of stuff that um, we put out and the rest of things in my life that have been keeping me busy for a lot of summer. I got, I have a subscriber who follows me. Um, his name is Sean Reyes TV is his, is his um, uh, YouTube um, handle. He doesn't really have any videos right now. He's hoping to get some at some point. Um, he, he's from um, Trinidad, Trinidad Tobago and he is, um, he sent me some comic books. He actually does comic books um, for a foundation that's there. Um, and he also sent me a, a book um, they did that didn't have to do with the foundation. And I, I'm going to do a video and, and talk about those books. And he's interested in, in, in me and Ethan's opinions on the art and, and, and his part of the craft of it and whatnot. And I'm really looking forward to talking about that. I, you know, I've read through the books, um, so I'm, I'm excited to um, do that. And um, uh, I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, I'll not talk about that a lot now. I want to talk about that then. But just to say that that's something that's that's coming. Um, just a little while ago, I read an article where someone interviewed um, Dan Didio, the, um, one of the heads at DC, and they are hinting at a um, line-wide crossover event of some sort, possibly at the end of 2013. Ugh. I don't like event books, and as a whole, I don't like crossover type things. So we'll see what that's like. The one thing I thought was really funny, though, there's a quote in the article, and I'm not going to quote it exactly, but it's something along the lines of, in the, pro in the process of this crossover, they're going to create better continuity development. And I think that's hilarious because we're already starting to see holes in the whole um, New 52 continuity inconsistencies with the Robins and some of the other stuff that's going on in there. So I just thought that was um, uh, that was pretty funny. Um, I also just heard that for you X-Men collectors out there, the big fans, that the highest graded copy of X-Men number one, and it was graded at a 9.8, just sold for $492,937.50. So, I don't know how many of you YouTubers out there can afford that number one. <laughs> but, wow. It'd be nice to be able to buy a book like that, huh? Pretty cool. You know, I know we all have that dream of, you know, walking into some garage sale and finding an awesome book like that. But, at any rate, pretty outstanding. Pretty outstanding that there are some serious um, comic book collectors out there that have some cash. I'm, I'm hoping that, that, it's, that it's a major comic book collector that's buying these books for these kind of prices as opposed to somebody who's buying it as an investment um, down the road. Um, let's see. What else do I want to talk about? 
Oh, hey, I, I, I keep hearing that people have problems with, um, are having problems with YouTube right now and getting, um, being able to respond to people's video. Those of you who know how to fix that, I don't have a problem with it. I, I can respond to live videos without any problems. I've heard people say that they kind of offhandedly that they figured out how to fix it. Let us know, you know, um, let everybody know. Because I mean, that's one of the cool things about this whole YouTube comic book community we got going on now is I, I love talking comics with everybody. Um, I love re watching everybody else's videos. I love commenting and, and hearing comments back and, and, and all of that. I mean, even if I got, I think even if I got tired of making videos, I would keep making them just because I'm never going to get tired of talking about comics. So I doubt I'll get tired of the videos too, but I never get tired of talking about comic books. So it's a real kick to, um, to um, you know, get to talk to as many people, and it really is a bummer if we can't get the respond button to work right. So let us all know, uh, or if somebody has and I've just missed it, um, let me know so we can point it out to people. Uh, speaking of talking to comic books, um, one of my best friends um, who has been collecting comic books a little longer than I have even, um, um, and really came one of the reasons I became friends with him is through comic books and whatnot. Uh, and I've been friends with him for, I don't know, 30-some years. Um, yeah, um, he's got a blog, and he also um, does podcasts, and I podcast with him um, somewhat regularly. I say that, but, you know, it's, we, just, we just did one, so there's one out right now. Anyway, his, um, his blog is at longboxreview.com. Um, dot wordpress dot com and check it out if you like to just listen to just straight podcasts that aren't attached to um, you know the um, YouTube you should check it out um, he's got a lot of interesting stuff to say you can hear me blather on about stuff a whole lot more um, I, I tend to rant and rave on most of those podcasts you can hear me sounding excited and irritated by things and stuff um, but anyway and also speaking of of, of um, podcasts and um, uh, comic talk and that sort of stuff. There's the comic book talk, I think it's called comic book talk channel that uh, the Captain Cummings and um, uh, Constant Bromstar and some of them are doing. I know a lot of you know about that, but in the off chance that some of you that are following me aren't following that or aren't following them, check that out. Um, they do a podcast. It's either on Friday nights or Saturday nights and gets posted the next couple of days. Um, this Friday, and as of doing this video, that is um, tomorrow. Um, they're going to shoot for a live one. I'm hoping to jump on and be on that one. It'll be on a live YouTube um, thing. I don't know exactly how that works, so we'll, we'll find out. Um, I know there's another um, of the people that I follow that do a, a YouTube podcast also. And that's Jay's Comics. Um, he does one. It's on um, British time, and I don't know exactly what time that is. It's for me, it's like Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. I'm on the West Coast of the United States. I'm hoping to be able to get on that sometime. I haven't really talked with Jay yet about it. Um, just to see if I can jump on and, and talk with some other people. Um, Constant Brom Stars on that one too. I think Captain Cummings hangs out on there lots of times also. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to jump on that one too because then I'll see to talk comics with some other people because for me, besides just collecting the books, getting to talk about them and talk with everybody about what's going on, all the different stuff and whatnot, uh, is a great thing. Um, love the YouTube community for this. Really happy that I decided to start making videos instead of just writing um, reviews and whatnot. Because that's, that's what I used to do. You know, for a year or so before um, I did my videos, I have my um, oddfellowsthoughts.wordpress.com where I used to write reviews of stuff pre um, DC New 52. I started doing the videos with the whole September release of the New 52. So if you get really bored, you can go check out that old stuff. Um, anyway, really happy because I get to talk to a lot more people than what I did with the um, with just the written blog. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to talk about um, this week around, right around now. Um, oh, um, you may hear a little bit less from me for the next two weeks. Um, work is going to suck for a while. I'm working six days a week, 12 hours a day, kind of a deal. Um, so I'll be hard pressed for reviews. Me and Ethan might squeeze out. Well, we're going to do a review. We'll do a review this coming weekend and have it out Sunday, Monday, something like that. Um, 
but um, the next couple weeks might be hard to get some um, no capes and some um, monster comic reviews squeezed in there. So we'll see. So if you don't hear me commenting a lot, um, it's either I'm way behind on watching all those videos, but I really want to watch them because I, I, like I said, I enjoy hearing what you guys all have to say. Uh, I keep finding new people. That's another awesome thing. I keep finding new people to, to follow and watch some of the videos. So I have hours and hours of videos. I end up um, watching, especially after Wednesdays and everybody gets their new comics and stuff, which is awesome. Just saying, if you don't hear from me, um, it's not that I'm not watching or I'm not interested or I don't care anymore. I do. Um, I, but like all of us, my time is finite, so I have to try and squeeze that in amongst reading my own comics and getting some sleep so I don't run off the road on my way on my commute to work. <laughs> anyway, any rate, um, yeah, uh, everybody keep up the good comic book talking. Look forward to watching your videos. Hoping you're watching my videos. Thanks a lot for subscribing, thumbs up, and thumbs down, and comment, and all that good stuff. Take it easy, everybody.